In this video, we're going to look at required practical one, where you set up a stationary wave on a string. I'm going to look at how you're going to pass all the CPACs in my class. So I'll be assessing you on CPAC 1A, which is your ability to follow written instructions, 2B, where you have to overcome any issues I encounter and you'll have to discuss how you overcame them, and 3B, where you have to write a clear written uh, risk assessment and you're going to have to make sure you do the practical uh, safely. Okay, so in this practical, you're going to set up like so. Okay, you've got the vibr sing um, signal generator and the vibrator. You've got a string and over a pulley and then a mass hanging on it. First of all, actually, before you set up, you're going to measure the mass of the string. Okay, you're also going to have to measure the length of the string. This is because you'll have to divide the mass of the string by the length of the string to get the mass per unit length for the string, which is a, a constant that you're going to you're not going to change. You could change it if you wanted if you wanted that as an independent variable, but we're going to have that as a control variable. Okay, you have to write that down. You're also going to write down the mass of that's hanging on the edge of the pulley because that's going to be applying the tension. So we're going to have to write that down as well. And we're going to keep it a constant. Our independent variable, the thing that we change is going to be the length. So we're going to move the movable bridge along and we're going to let it form a harmonic like this. So this is the first harmonic. And we're going to measure the frequency at which this harmonic is formed. And so that independent variable is the length and we're going to measure the frequency as our uh, dependent variable. Okay, and if you decide to use a different harmonic, not the fundamental, so maybe like the second harmonic like this, that's okay, okay as well, as long as you keep that constant and you note that down when you're doing the practical. So step one is to be able to read the written instruction that you're going to be given. So this is the instruction that you'll be given during the practical. Read it, understand it, and you'll have to follow them during the practical. Now you can deviate from the written instructions, but you'll have to discuss how and why you did that in your uh, write up at the end. Okay, so for example, maybe you didn't choose to use the fundamental frequency, maybe you use the second harmonic instead. So you'll have to discuss why you might have done that. Or maybe you didn't use these lengths that are suggested um, over there in this practical. So you have to also discuss why you might have used different lengths. Step two is to make a table where you can record all the results. Now, according to the instructions given, you're gonna take at least two measurements for any given length. Okay, you're going to change the length like so. Notice how they're all written to the same decimal place. So it's important when you record data into a table that's all written to the same decimal place. I've got all the units there as well. So I've got slash meters for length, slash hertz for frequency. I'm taking at least two readings. You can take three if you want. And I'm writing down the mean frequency as well. Okay, also remember you had to at the beginning of the uh, practical write down the length of um, the mass of the string and the length of the string to get the mass being the length of the string. Also, the mass that's hanging on the end, which I'm not changing and keeping a constant in my practical. And if you want to, you can do the first harmonic and the second harmonic as well. So if you decide the second harmonic, make sure you make another table like so and record the results in that one. The third step is to write a risk assessment. Okay. So for example, things to consider: uh, Will you be seated or stood up during the practical? So in most labs, everyone will have to chuck their chair in, put their bags away, clear the space so no one trips over anything. Um, and if, if something falls over, you can move out of the way if you stood up, while if you sat down, they might fall on you. So that's the first um, one of the things you can write about. Another thing is what kind of string are you using? So if you're using a metal string uh, in, or in your practical, what happens if it snaps? Would it, would it cut your eye? So maybe you're wearing goggles or maybe you're just not using a metal string and maybe you're using like a, a normal um, soft string. Okay. Uh, what happens if the masses fall on your feet? So there's a mass hanging on the edge there. Is it a heavy mass you're using or is it light mass? Is there a risk of it could do damage? So you can discuss that. Also, what happens if the equipment falls over? So you can see this, this tension that's being applied to the vibrator and the signal generator. If the signal generator and the vibrator are quite light, they might get pulled and they might fall over. So maybe you want to put some mass on top of it to ensure that it doesn't fall over. Um, the signal generator is connected to the main supply. So obviously you're dealing with electricity. So how are you going to deal with it? Uh, obviously not with wet hands or anything like that. And um, what are you going to do between measurements? Are you going to just leave it on? It might heat up. It might cause some stuff um, to burn if it's if there's a lot of current going through it. So generally, how would you deal with the electricity and electrical appliances and the safety involved in that? Okay, step four is to do the practical and following the instructions and note down any issues encountered and how you overcame them. So for example, we use the light string in our practical, and was it easy to spot? If not. You know, one of the things you could have done was use a contrasting background like so, 
and that made it a bit easier to see the harmonics especially the first harmonic now if you can't even see the first harmonic with the background then maybe you want to use the second harmonic maybe it's easier to identify the frequency at which that occurs and then the frequency generator so if you look at the frequency generator the dials are not very precise they're not they've got the readings in between the 10 and 20 so when you took readings and you know you were probably working in groups did you both um, take a reading did one person take a reading or did you both individually take one independently and then uh, come to an agreement on what the reading it was because this frequency generator isn't very precise and finally complete the discussion section of your handbook okay so this is where you write down for example if you didn't follow the written instructions exactly and you decided to change something so that you can write down why and that's okay if you do that okay which measurements did you find difficult to take and how did you make it easier so you can include that in your discussion section and also what can you conclude from your data so the equation for frequency is inversely proportional to the length as you can see in this one uh, over two is a constant tension is a constant because we kept the mass uh, on the end of the string constant and mass per unit length is also a constant so it should be inverse proportional and and just looking at the table the, the results in your table do you think it follows that um trend